Okay, so <clears throat> I'm out here. It's it's not late at all. It's just dusk, and I'm taking um, Pacheco out to the park so he can stretch his legs. Like he got room at the house or whatever, but. I like the idea of him running around, and so that's why I'm anticipating having him a backyard so he could be running around, playing, doing what he need to do. And yeah, the last uploads that I have, they were concerning, like, it's literally like, what the fuck, <laughs> what the hell happened? <laughs> and I'm understanding, I'm understanding how there are essential and important things that you have to incorporate in your everyday life in order to build that excellency that you want to get to. I'm also understanding the devices and the different schemes and plans of ops, spiritual ops, um, that are used in order to prevent you from reaching your highest potential and what I'm doing as well that's preventing me from reaching my highest potential because a lot of people don't want you to talk about spiritual ops they don't want you to talk about some of the things that you go through because they the ops right so they don't want their secrets being out there and so they try to spin it around and be like you know well you you're not doing this and you're not doing that and you got 24 hours in the day and this and this and that and it's easy for you to say that when you don't want throwing a rock and hiding your hand because spiritual ops, the, the importance of discipline and routine is for it to be ingrained in your brain because, and for it to be second nature for you. Because here's the reality of it. The reality of it is you are always going to have a fight. That's the reality. That's just life. You're always going to have a fight. The thing about it is it's how you respond to the fight and how programmed do you allow yourself to be, which is disciplined. There's nothing wrong with the word program. There's nothing wrong with the word discipline. But it's like how disciplined are you willing to be so that you can win half of the battle? Discipline, focus, showing up for yourself, doing right by yourself is half of the battle. And the other half of the battle is your inner knowing that comes from those practices. And when those practices, your motivation, your everything that you are um, can be messed with and tampered with spiritually. There are people who can go in and manipulate how you function in your routine, which means you have to brainwash yourself, psych yourself up out to constantly stay on track with your routine and it's hard it's hard but it can be done and so part of what was what happened with me is my routine was attacked my focus was attacked my discipline was attacked my uh, dedication was attacked we talked earlier in different um, audio post where I talk about how I was detached from myself as a person I was detached from myself as a as a person and so I had to learn how to reattach or how to get attached again to my soul I had a loss of, of a sense of myself and part of that loss of sense of self was I didn't have any motivation before I even knew about anything about the metaphysical or anything. I um, had I had a prosperity goal and I don't think there's anything wrong with having a prosperity goal, because if you have as much interference that I've had, then the truth is you need some sort of goal or something that's going to drive you to obsession to obtain it. And obsession is not bad it is a lot of the time misguided um and there's dualities in it there's obsession and there's passion i had passion i had real passion um obsession is unhealthy you'll do anything from an unhealthy standpoint to a detrimental st standpoint whether it's detrimental to you or detrimental to someone else so I don't really like obsession I love passion and passion is you are willing to do everything that you need to within 
within universal law because universal law is real. It's real. Within universal law and universal boundaries, you're able to do everything that you need to and you know that you're going to reach your end goal. You know that things are going to turn around for you. You know that things are already turned around for you because you're already implementing things that are turning the situation around. I like passion, but when you take that passion and distort it, it becomes obsession. And one of the things that kept happening to me was I was able to be easily distracted with false realities. And I'm not talking about, oh, delusions of grandeur. That's a real issue. Like I said, go seek professional help for that because I'm I'm not Jesus Christ. Um, but even though he, he, dwell, he dwells within me, I'm not Jesus Christ. And I don't want to be Jesus Christ either because he died. Um, and he died for a group of people that that ain't what he died for. And so I, you know, sad situation uh, with that. But I'm glad that he did it for a greater cause, even though, you know, it was something that he didn't want to do but he conti- he he did it anyways he could have gotten himself out of it so but i don't want to be the martyr archetype and i've been living in an archetype of a martyr for a long time and i want to be i want to have a heroine archetype even if that means that i'm the villain in someone else's story I'm okay with that because at some point you have to be able to rescue yourself. You have to be able to pick yourself up and say, no, I want better for me. And this is how I am going to go about obtaining better for me. And um, yeah, this is basically my journey for doing better for me and having better for me. And there's been a lot of things and obstacles and people, places, things that have been in place to make sure that that does not happen but that's not any of my business or any of my concern here's why um before I knew about all of these things that were going on you know spiritually metaphysically whatever I was still passionate about reaching a certain abundance and financial goal and a lot of the things that were being done towards me behind the scenes specifically from people in my family metaphysically um and now I'm coming to realize in the material as well like literal literal crimes um what I've come to find out is, okay, before any of that information even came to me um, or be, before I came into the knowledge that people could manipulate energy and do things and make certain outcomes happen, I was still getting the job done, okay? I was still pushing forward. In fact, I was terrifying and freaking them out because they were doing all of these things that they believed in and I was completely oblivious to it and was completely working against it because my willpower and now and so they had to do some things to make me disconnect from willpower to make me spiritually bewildered you know spiritually just not here just void just in a void like swimming in a void like literally just out here and so lack of passion lack of um desire lack of all of these things that are not bad lack of wants um lack of uh vision lack of vision for your soul purpose all of those things were tampered with to kind of just have me on this hamster wheel of life just I'm stuck in this thing I'm doing this I'm doing that there's no other possibility there's no other hope that's not true that's not true and then when you're you're still going and you're still keeping up with what it is that you're supposed to be doing but you're completely unplugged from who you are as a person the God and the universe and the angels and the spirit guides and whatever else you believe in that helps you get through the day, baby, all of that will conspire with you, not against you. What's conspiring against you are those who are able to see beyond the veil 
and see where the end goal is. And I had that experience too, where I, I literally had people and I'm, I'm, there's certain terms that I'm learning right now. So I don't have the privilege to literally just spill them all over the place and be like, oh, this and this and that, da 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 da. No, I am in um, a regeneration, you know, stage where I'm I'm starting back over, and it's okay, it's okay, because the end goal was to have me no longer here anymore on Earth, walking around, let alone walking around and being competent in my right mind. So, you know, I'm already up. We're up. We're winning. It's okay. Things are not, you know, things are not, it's not like how it could have been. It could have been a whole nother way. You know, it could have been something completely different, but it's not. It's it's actually, I'm in a good spot right now. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful because it just, it could have been so much worse. I mean, the things, people and places that came up against me and that was coming up against me, it was like, what? So I don't, uh uh. It's like, I'm okay. We're okay. You're okay. Yeah, we're okay. So it was a real, like, it was a real experience. But, um, just kind of going through things now that I know, okay, this is kind of what has been going on and how things have been going down what do we do about it and the simple thing to that is it's really not anything that you do about the people places or things you do something for your situation so whatever you have to do and understand coming from a strict traditional christian background i'm gonna go out there and say it anything that you do prayer um uh, you know reading of the scriptures meditation um anything that you do within church background outside of church background all of it is energetic and all of it has some sort of um i would say a reaction to your action yeah and you should be defending yourself spiritually every single day because every because of all the work and the time that God put into creating you, there's always something to defend. The difference is you can defend it in a forceful way and expend all your energy or you can defend it in a logical thought out way where you are literally putting up the parameters that you need to put up every day so that you can thrive and you need to be planning for when bigger fights or when bigger problems arise in your life. And part of how you defend yourself is going to be rooted in your discipline, in your routine, in what you do, and in what you're passionate about, in what you're intentional about. You do need a why. Why do you do what you do? I was spiritually being watched um, and physically for a while. And people wanted to know what the people who were tracking me wanted to know what is your why why do you do this why do you do that really had to study um where my heart was you know because that's where a lot of things come from your heart your soul your mind you know your your motivation your drive and part of my why was rooted in family I love my family so part of my why was rooted in my family part of my why and you got to understand when you don't know your why but when the enemy knows your why because the enemy can read your why by um what you do repetitively or what your patterns are your why might be just yourself me myself and i your why might be you know your loved ones whatever your why is the enemy has to study that so that that can be the thing that gets attacked so if you don't know why you do what you do or what you want why you want what you want um it's dangerous to you because there is a why in there it's not going to reveal itself to you it's something you have to search for that's why it's called soul searching so with that being said looks like my dog is searching for a reason why he can't play with that other dog i don't know but i don't want to hog up the park like i do let my dog be playing with other dogs but sometimes other dogs don't be playing fair 
So it'd be like, uh, uh, what's going on? But my why, my intention um, was attacked. It was demonized. It was told that you shouldn't even have a why. You shouldn't even have an intention. And when you start acting and operating like that, that's when you become like a spiritual zombie. And I don't have time for nothing like that. So bye for now.